Father, Lord Jesus Christ, good morning, um, Lord, again. Lord, I am uh, I am utterly incapable of doing this. Um, the enormity of this video and what you have given me, um, I cannot do it unless thou, O Lord, art present. Um, please, Lord, I am the least of all saints. I am not qualified. I am a sinner who is chief, my God. There is nothing good in me. I don't trust in myself. I trust on Thou, o Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my Savior, my Father. With all that's going on, Lord, um, this is something that I know, Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father, that you have called me to do. And, Lord, the enormity of this is uh, pretty, um, pretty overwhelming, but all things are possible through you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, my God. Lord, those of the brethren and sisters who will watch this, uh, no matter how long this takes, please, Lord, empty me of me, that thou, O Lord, may speak through these lips, speak unto this congregation, and may we all be guided into all truth. May you give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning, uh, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and an understanding heart. Feed us with the sincere milk of your word. Wash us in the regeneration of your word. Um, guide us into all truth. Speak to us through your word, for your servants are hearing, Lord. And, um, get me out of the way, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. I repent. And Lord, the enemies of you, the Jesuits, the coadjutors, the infiltrators, who cannot handle your word, only to deceive. Get them out of the way. Expose the false, the fakes, the, in, uh, the uh, infiltrators, the coadjutors, and the Jesuits themselves. Um, and protect the brethren, my God. And remove the veil from our eyes to see the truth. And... Um, to spot the false and phony. Be with my mouth. Speak to this congregation, my God and Father. And um, <laughs> Lord, this is at your feet. I can't do this, my God. I repent. Let's do this, Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father in heaven. My Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, my God. In Jesus' name, God's people said amen. Brother Jonathan, what do you think? I'm going to be making an introduction video for this video, okay? So we're going to get right into the scriptures with a little um, uh, this, that, and the other thing, but I'm going to make an introduction video for this uh, after I do this. So if this seems a little out of place in some things, that's why. Get your King James Bible. The real Bible. Okay? This, this, look at me. This ain't a milk video. This is going to be a lot of meat. We have this, this, and this to go through today. I hope you're hungry. Okay, I'm this the same the same milk, boy. This is meat. Uh, I'm also going to be using my copy of the Webster's 1828 dictionary because we're going to define some words in this video. Okay, as I told my beloved brother yesterday, today is the uh, 26th. Um, I want to avoid using uh, Webster's Dictionary as much as possible, not for any re reason, but rather for the scriptures to explain themselves. Okay? Okay? In this video, there are going to be a lot of singular verse references. Okay? We, we got tons of scripture we're going through today. Okay? This may probably be two parts um, because there's only so much I can personally handle sitting here 
uh, doing this without a break. Okay, but however long it's going to take is how long it's going to take. You got it? And if you can't handle this kind of stuff, go away. Okay? But let's go through the scriptures together. All right? You got it? That's your head. Let's go. Get your King James Bible. If you have one of these things, you're going to need it. Uh, turn in your King James Bible to 1 John chapter 4. Yes, this is going to be an <laughs> expository video on 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Okay? All right. Now, very quickly, uh, I use point of reference in studying the scriptures. Okay, what is that? We're going to be looking at these verses, and then we're going to go to other corresponding verses to define words and reference. And then we are going to come back here to see how the things we looked up coincide with what we're looking at. That is the point of reference method of study. You may have another method or way of doing it. God, God bless you. It's the way I do it, and this is the way I'm presenting it to you. Okay? Here's how we're going to do this. Okay? Like I said, you, you got a ribbon marker? Use it, because we got a lot of scriptures we're going to today. We're also going to use utilize the law of first mention quite a bit, okay? Quite a bit. But here's how we're going to do this. We are going to primarily, at first, concentrate on 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, okay? We're going to do an initial read-through of these verses, and then we are going to meticulously, methodically, painstakingly go through the scripture references. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay? This is what the Lord has given me to do. Okay? So I hope you're ready. All right? My God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my God and Father. Love you. Let's do this. Okay. First John, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Okay? Beloved, believe not every spirit. Lowercase s. Uh, incidentally, I hope you got your Bible open and following me along as we read the scriptures. I expect you to do this. This type of video, you got to. Okay? The real Bible. The King James Bible. Okay? Follow me along. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, sorry for that. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Lowercase s. That's going to come into play. But try the spirits. Lowercase s whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit, capital S, of God. Every spirit, lowercase s, that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay? Now, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Okay? Now, okay, there's the initial read-through. Now we're going to dissect verse 1, and we're going to look at uh, certain words, okay? All right? Now, Beloved, Believe not every spirit.
spirit, lowercase s, believe. The word believe. Okay? If you have a Webster's 1828 dictionary, which I highly recommend for studying uh, God's Word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, let's look up this word believe. Okay? I'm only going to use this for three specific words. Okay? The rest of scriptures are going to define itself, but we're also going to look at the uh, scripture verses for this, okay? Beloved, believe not every spirit. Note the lowercase s on spirit, okay? But first, let's go to believe, okay? Believe. Okay. Believe out of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Verbatim. Verb transitive. Believe. Verb transitive. To credit upon the authority or testimony of another. To be persuaded of the truth of something upon the declaration of another. To be persuaded of the truth of something upon the declaration of another. Or upon evidence furnished by reason, by reasons, arguments, and deductions of the mind. Or by other circumstances. Then personal knowledge. When we believe upon the authority of another, we always put confidence in his veracity. When we believe upon the authority of reasoning, arguments, or concurrence, or of facts, or and circumstances, excuse me, we rest on we rest our conclusions upon their strength or probability, their agreement with our own experience, etc. Two, to expect or hope with confidence, to trust. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Psalm 27. Believe verb transitive. To have a firm persuasion of anything. In some cases, to have full persuasion approaching to certainty. In others, more doubt is implied. It is often followed by in or on, especially in the scriptures. Get a lot of this. To believe in is to hold as the object of faith. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, John 14 is the reference he gives. To believe on is to trust, to place full confidence in, to rest upon with faith. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1. Johnson. Whatever that's written there for. But there is no ground for much distinction. In theology, to believe sometimes expresses a mere assent of the understanding to the truths of the Gospels, like what easy believism people teach. As in the case of Shimon, Acts 8. <laughs> Hello. In others, the word implies with this assent of the mind, a yielding of the will and affections accompanied with a humble reliance on Christ for salvation. John 1, 12, 3, uh, uh, chapter 3 and verse 15. Okay. In popular, in, popular, in popular use and familiar discourse, to believe often expresses an opinion in a vague manner, without a, very, without a very exact estimate of evidence, noting a mere preponderance of opinion, and is nearly equated, and is nearly equivalent to think or suppose, and then it says believed, participle passive credited, assented to as true. Believe. So, 
Now, look at First John, First John uh, four, verse one again. Beloved, believe, assent to be true. Not every spirit, spirit. Okay, but now first, believe as far as what the scriptures contain. Let's go to the very first incident of the word believe in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Your Bible's going to get a workout today. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 through, uh, on to verse 6. Okay? Read the context on your own time. we got a lot of scriptures we're going to be going through. Okay? Pause it and read it and, uh, and yourself or check up on anything the Lord will have you to. Okay? But Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, Abraham, or Abram, excuse me, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he, Abram, believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed in what the Lord told him. Okay? And it was what? And he counted it to him for righteousness, believing in the promises that the Lord gave him right there. Okay? Next uh, scripture verse reference, Exodus chapter 4. You're going to see a lot of references in the Torah. And when I say Torah, I mean the first four, uh, five books of Moses. Okay, not the whole corpus of the scriptures, including the Talmud. Okay. Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. Believe. So what do we see? Believe in verse 5 and believe in verse 1. Okay? Believe. Now, the very first reference of the word believe was in Genesis 15, verse 6, which we just looked at. Okay? Believing on what the Lord said, okay? To have trust and confidence in what was said of the Lord, okay? We get this so far? This is pretty simple so far, right? Go to Numbers. And remember, um, in, verse, in uh, Genesis 15, verse 6, Principle passive, passive, credited, assented to as true. Okay? He believed on the Lord, credited to be true. Okay? Now, Numbers. Numbers. Chapter 14. Numbers, chapter 14. One verse. Verse 11. Go there, of course. And the Lord, uh, Numbers 14, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? 
And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shewed them, you see, believe again. And by the way, these are not hardly all the uh, references to the word believe that we can look up. Okay? But you see, believe. Okay? Believing it on him, you could say in that verse, but he does not say believe on me. It just simply says, ere they believe me, that what he says is true. Okay? Plus, with all the signs that he had shewed them, it's like, what more proof do you need to believe in God? To believe in him? To believe on him? Huh? Now, Exodus, uh, Numbers, while we are in Numbers, chapter 20. One verse again. I told you there was going to be a lot of singular verse references. Okay? 20, verse 12. Numbers 20, verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have, have given them. And the context is, you know, at this moment he's told them to go to the rock and speak to the rock, speak to the rock, and the waters would gush out. But Moses got a little uh, hot-tempered and bah, bah, smote the rock that the uh, water came out when he had already smitten the rock with his rod once. Okay, there's a whole lot we can uh, uh, get into that about how Christ died for our sins and was crucified once. Once he died once and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay, we can get off on that, but we're not going to do that. Okay, but you see, believed. Because ye believed me not. Lord told Moses, speak to the rock. What did Moses do? He struck it, smote it. Didn't believe the Lord. What he told him. Okay? Now Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 32. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 32. And this one is very simple. Yet in the in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God. What he told you. Do you believe what he told you? In his word, the King James Bible, the real Bible? I do. What about you? And chapter 9 in Deuteronomy, verse 23. 9.23. 9.23 in Deuteronomy. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you. Then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Didn't believe in what he said, or, or hearkened, heard what he said. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Matthew. Matthew, or Matteo, in the coin Greek. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. Okay? Matthew 18, verse 6. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. But, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, okay, very quickly, he had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He didn't shed his blood on the cross to pay for my sins and your sins yet. He was the king walking around offering the kingdom unto the Jews. Okay? The, hence, the believe in me. Believe in me how? That he is God the Father, and he is the promised Messiah or Mashiach unto the Jewish people. That he is the king. Okay? 
Let's get out of Let's reread that again. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Okay. Also, you could say that is kind of a reference onto Judas Iscariot, the son of perdition. You could say that. Okay. Mark chapter 1. Okay. Are you getting a, a gravity of believe? Hmm? Like I said, we're going to do a lot. Okay. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Now, let's read 14 and 15. Okay. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Now, if that repent there means uh, to believe, and then he says, and believe the gospel, you'll have two believes. Doesn't work. Okay? And believe the gospel. The good news. There's the king. Sent unto the Jews. Okay? Mark chapter 9, verse 25. Mark 9, oh, excuse me, Mark 9, verse 23. And here's one that these um, prosperity guys and these metaphysical science people who believe in the secret, like Joel Osteen, um, they take they take this out of context. Ma uh, Mark nine verse twenty three. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Okay. Okay. Now, Mark eleven twenty three. Mark 11, 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Again, people will take this verse out of context and twist it like uh, Osteen does like Kenneth Copeland does, like the prosperity preachers, like that sick, perverted NLP guy, Tony Robbins, people who say that your words have power, you create your own reality by the words you speak. Uh, they will sometimes quote this verse, taking it totally out of context, uh, context like NLPers do. Okay, But we're looking at this for the reference of believe. Okay, Believe. Assenting to be true, Fact. Okay? Believe. All right? Now, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 15. Now, this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. King James Bible, the real Bible. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They... They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that, on, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, 
having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Okay? Okay? Now, John. John. Chapter 1. Beg your pardon, brethren. I have this cushion that I use, which is really... Okay. There we go. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Note the three capital W, uh, capital W's there, okay? Capital W Word is always referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, okay? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a, there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of, that, of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word, capital W, was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, John chapter 14 Oh, excuse me, John chapter 3, excuse me, excuse me, John chapter 3, verses 14 through 18, okay, have to go here, have to go here, John chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 18, John chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 18, Actually, we'll read 12. 12 on 18. Speaking to Nicodemus. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoso believe, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, loved his past tense, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Okay? Romans, chapter 1. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Romans, chapter 1. Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, 
and also to the Greek. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 3, verse 3. Romans 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Hmm. Verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be, mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now, Romans 3, 22 through 26. Now, here is the trickery of the easy believism people. What leads up to uh, Romans 22 on to verse 26, there are uh, verses 10 through 18, which tells you that there is none righteous, no, not one. There are, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone on the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That's what the easy believism heretics who are helping the Vatican like to skip over. And they go straight to this. That's their heresy. That's their error. That's their danger. Creating false converts. You have to deal with your self-righteousness first by admitting you ain't good and that you can't save yourself. Okay? I have to throw that in there. Okay? But Romans 22 on the 3 Romans 3, verses 22 on to verse 26. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay? Now, Romans 9, 33 9.33, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? It's one thing to believe in. It's a totally different thing to believe on. See? Okay? You can believe in. Lots of people believe in Jesus. Do you believe on Jesus? Okay? And I remember the Jesuit coadjutors made a big stink about that. But there's a difference. Okay? Now, to the favorite two verses of Jesuit coadjutors and uh, infiltrators, heretics, who dispute these two verses in Romans chapter 10. Verses... 4 through 13, okay? But the two verses, you know what they are, that everybody likes to uh, come in arms about, about calling on the name of the Lord. Let's read. Romans 10, verses 4, on to verse 13. And I have a whole video about uh, Romans 14, for those who are curious, okay? Verse 14, that is. Romans 10, verses 4, on to verse 13. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. 
But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here they are. That if thou shalt confess, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Those two things. Confession from the heart. Not profession from the mind. Okay. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you confess something like that, that is the ultimate form of you humbling yourself before the Lord. The lesser is calling on the greater. And that is why these easy believism heretics and Jesuit coadjutors and infiltrators have such a problem with it. Because you're not broken of yourself. Let's continue. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And boy, you fakes hate that, don't you? Now, that is the scriptural references, not all of them about believe. Now go back to 1 John 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit or case s, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Spirit and spirits. Both lowercase s. Spirit. Spirits. Genesis chapter 1. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. Got my house open. All the windows. Genesis chapter 1. Let's see the separation of the members of the Godhead. Okay? Or parts, whatever you want to call it. Okay? How the Godhead can separate. Let's check this out. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read the first three verses. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit capital S, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Capital S, the Spirit of God, capitalized the Spirit of God, okay? And the Lord is that Spirit? Yeah. And verse 3, and God said, when you say something, what are you doing? You are speaking. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So right there is the very first reference of spirit. And note that it is a capital S, the Lord himself. Okay? One God who is able to separate, not three persons, spirit, soul, and body, that make one God. <laughs> That's, woohoo, that's nuts. That's crazy. That's heresy. Okay? Now, what is that? In uh, Genesis, now, 41, verse 38. Okay? Genesis 41, verse 38. Genesis 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the capital S, Spirit of God, 
is, let's read that again. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit, capital S, of God is? Spirit of God, the Lord himself. Okay? The Lord himself. Now, Exodus chapter 31. Like I said, these, these are not all the references, or else we would be here for eight hours. And I love you. I can't do that. <laughs> okay? And you don't want me to do that either. Okay? Exodus 31. Exodus 31, verse 3. Now you're going to notice something here. If you're paying attention. Exodus 31, verse 3. And I have filled him with the lowercase spirit of God. Now look at this. In wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, very quickly, during this dispensation, the spirit of God Okay, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, was not a permanent resident. These people were not sealed as we are today in the time of the Gentiles. Okay, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit could come and go, come and go. Okay, he was not permanent as it is for those who are saved and born again today, who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. We are sealed unto the day of redemption, and our redemption draweth nigh, by the way. But, okay, the Holy Ghost was not permanent in this dispensation. Okay? Okay? So, we have to remember that. Okay? Because, you note the lowercase s. Okay? What is going on here? Look at this verse. Okay, look at this verse. This is very important. Okay? And I, the Lord talking, have filled him, filled him with the spirit, lowercase s, of God. In wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Again, and I have filled him with the lowercase s, Spirit of God. What is going on here? The Lord is imparting to Bazael, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He is imparting to him what? Not himself, because it's not a capital S. No. The Lord is supernaturally, I hate that word, but go with me, is supernaturally giving on to Basil what? In wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Because he said, I have filled him with the lowercase s, Spirit of God. That means that God is imparting something to this man. Okay? He is giving him something that he does not know himself, rather than just, rather, but the Lord is giving it to him. Okay? That's very important to note that, okay? Because it's not a capital S. It's not a typo either, okay? The capital S and lowercase s of spirit is a very important thing to note, okay? So, and sometimes you're like, well, 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 what? When you see a capital S, it's referring to the Lord himself, you know? Spirit of, of the Lord, Okay, the Spirit of God. We're not touching the Spirit of the Lord in this video because in the text of 1 John 4 that we're looking at, it says Spirit of God. Okay, that's why we're looking at this. Okay, but he is imparting. The Lord is imparting something. 
okay? Giving him something. He is giving him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all manner of workmanship, okay? He's giving him that. He is filling him with it. Look at the, look at the text, okay? Okay? Now? Now, where 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 we? Where it's very, uh, now go to 35, verse 31, okay? 35, verse 31. Again, 35, 31 in Exodus. And he hath filled, the he is the Lord, hath filled him with the lowercase s, spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Okay? He gave it to him, okay? It is not that the Lord himself is personally residing within that man. He is imparting these things onto him, okay? Because like I said, in this dispensation, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, all right? God is imparting something to him, the Spirit of God, meaning in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Okay, this man would uh, this man would not have known these things unless the Spirit of God, given to him in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, verse thirty-two, and to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. Okay? Okay? He is giving him the Spirit of God and wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to know things that he wouldn't know by himself unless the Lord supernaturally gave it to him. You could say revelation, but it doesn't say that, does it? Huh? You get it? That's your head. Okay, let's continue now. Okay, Numbers 24, verse 2. Numbers 24, verse 2. Again, you're going to see another lowercase s. And note who's the one speaking it. Balaam. Numbers 24, verse 2. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him, lowercase s. Okay? And what did Balaam do? He prophesied, told of future events. Okay? But then again, you see what Balaam did, and you read in Revelation chapter 2 or 3 it is, how he cast a stumbling block for the children of Israel, and the children of Israel killed Balaam, by the way. Okay? Is Balaam in heaven? I personally doubt it. I'll let you chew on that one for a while myself. Okay, see. Okay? But the Spirit of God came upon Balaam to what? To prophesy. Oh, don't you worry. Wait, wait. Don't you worry. Wait for it. Okay? So you see the lowercase s right there. You see that? Yeah? Okay, that's not a coincidence. The Spirit of God came upon him so he could prophesy and tell of these future events. Okay? You get it? All right. Now, Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel. There are other references. Like I said, we would be here for multiple hours. I don't want to do that, and you don't want to do that. Okay? First Samuel 11, verse 6. Now, You're going to note something here right away. 1 Samuel 11, verse 6. And the Spirit, capital S, of God, came upon Saul when he heard those things, and his anger was kindled greatly. Capital S, came upon Saul. The Lord himself. Not just something that he was imparting to him. Because you read later on in the book, uh, I believe we uh, we have that. Yes, 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 yes. 19. Go to Psalm, uh, 1 Sammy 19. Come on. Come on, work with me. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. But anyway, 
Go to 1 Samuel 19, okay? But we do see here in the book of 1 Samuel that the Lord departs from Saul and an evil spirit is sent by the Lord to torment or trouble Saul, okay? Because the Lord departs from him. Again, proving that the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident within this dispensation of the, under the law. Okay? Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God came upon Saul because Saul was anointed king. Okay? And the, the Holy Ghost was within Saul, but it departed from him. Okay? Because it was not a permanent resident. And an evil spirit came from the Lord upon Saul. Okay? But the Lord himself came upon Saul to do certain things. But when Saul started messing around and started uh, having that Adamic nature get the better of him by saying, it's their fault instead of my own, eventually the Spirit of God departed from him. Okay, again, proving that the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident. Okay, now, second, uh, 1 Samuel 19 verses 20 on to verse 23. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God, capital S, was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. These messengers of Saul were going to kill or arrest David and Samuel. So the Lord himself came upon these prophets to what? Upon these guys to what? protect, to protect David and Samuel. The Lord himself was getting involved to protect them. That's why it's just the capital S. Let's continue. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied, the, and lo, prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Shehu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be in Naoth of Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth of Ramah. And the Spirit, capital S, of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth in Ramah. Let's read this, 24. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say is Saul also among the prophets. Now, again, the Lord personally was protecting Saul, uh, Samuel and David. So he himself here came upon the messengers and Saul to protect David and Samuel. And of course, if you were, if we were to continue to read this, we would see that psst, he goes off, goes away from them because he was protecting David and Samuel, not permanent. The Lord Himself was doing that, not just something He was merely imparting. See, it's very significant. Okay, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Not John. Whoa, Brad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thank you, pardon, brother. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 24. Second Chronicles 24. Second Chronicles 24, verse 20. Now, this is uh, as far as uh, this is about uh, after the death of Jehoiada the priest who took care of, um, what was his name? What was his name? Um, Joash, okay? So, but check this out. Second Chronicles 24, verse 20. And the capital S, Spirit of God, came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, because capital S, Spirit of God was within Zechariah. That's why it says, Thus saith God. See, 
The Lord was speaking, the Lord himself was speaking through this man, prophesying. Okay. Why transgressest ye, transgress ye the commandments of the Lord? that ye cannot prosper. Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. You see that? Okay? You see that? Capital S, the Lord himself. Lowercase s, Spirit of God, is him imparting something to you. Okay? Let's continue now. Go to Job. Check this out. Check this out. You're going to like this. Job 27. Job 27. Job 27, verse 3. Now, remember, capital S, Spirit of God, the Lord Himself. Okay? We, we're not getting into the Spirit of the Lord because the text we're working on as a point of reference says Spirit of God. That's why we're concentrating on this. Okay? Capital S, Spirit of God, is the Lord Himself. Lowercase s is something that the Lord is imparting. You want more proof? Check this out. Job 27, verse 3. Now, no, let's read verses 1 through 3 in Job 27. Okay, beg your pardon. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who hath vexed, vexed my soul, all the while the my breath is in me, and the spirit, lowercase s, of God is in my nostrils. You see that? Lowercase s, spirit of God is in my nostrils. You see that? All and what is it talking about? It's defined right there in the text. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. If you're alive, it's because the Lord has allowed you to live. You got breath, the Lord gives it to you. You got a house over your head, the Lord gives it to you. Whether you want to believe on him or accept that or not makes zero difference. You wouldn't be able to do squat if the Lord wouldn't allow it. And that's including you being an infiltrator. The Lord will allow that to happen because of the times we live in. See? Okay? Job 33, 4. Remember, God made man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his uh, nostrils the breath of life? Job 33, 4. The Spirit, lowercase s, of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. God breathe. The Spirit, lowercase s, of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. The Spirit of God hath made me is defined right there in the text, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Okay? Now go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father speaking. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, you, you know the capital S, because Jesus Christ is the Father right there, okay? 
And if I by oh uh, where 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 we oh but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, capital S, then the kingdom of God is come onto you. Now note that one really quickly. Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Capital S. Because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and these three are one, is standing right there. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Matthew, now we're going back. Matthew 3.16. Matthew 3.16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the, capital S, Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. The Spirit of God, capital S. And we saw in Genesis chapter 1 how the Godhead can separate. Okay? God himself can separate himself. You and I can't do that. <laughs> okay? We're made in God's image. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Godhead thing ain't that hard to figure out. Really. Okay? You get this so far? About... Spirits so far, okay. Oh, we're not done. Oh, we're hardly done. We're hardly done, okay. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 14. Check this out. Check this out. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 14. This is going to play in, uh, come into play here, too, so pay attention. Romans chapter 8, verses 9, under verse 14. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S, Spirit. Because in this dispensation today, the time of the Gentiles, when you are saved and born again, the Lord himself, and the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, dwells in you. It does not mean you are God. Not at all. It just means that the Lord himself is within you if you're truly saved and born again. Let's continue. Okay? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, capital S. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if. Note these ifs. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, capital S, he is none of his. And if First John verses, uh, First John four verses one through three are a smoking gun proof test to salvation, if they are, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. Let's continue. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the capital S, Spirit, is life because of righteousness. But now note this. Note this. Note this. But if the Spirit in him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Capital S, because the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit. You have God living within you. 
God himself. We saw the contrast between the lowercase s and the capital case s. Okay? One is always the Lord personally involved. The other is when the Lord is imparting something. Okay? You get this so far? Let's continue. 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the capital S spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, capital S, they are the sons of God. All right, 1519. Oh, 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 oh. 1519. Romans 1519. Uh, 1519. Again, Romans 1519. Through mighty signs and wonders, the power of the capital S Spirit of God, by the power of the capital S, Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. You're getting the point now, aren't you? Okay? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 14. Verses 11 on to verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the lowercase s, spirit of man? The spirit of man, lowercase s. Which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God, capital S, uh, excuse me, but uh, even so the th even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S Spirit of God. Now we have not received the lowercase s Spirit of the world. Hinge this Spirit of the world. This is going to come into play later. But the Spirit which is of God. Now you notice there. But the spirit which is of God, lowercase s, something that God is imparting, right? Let's keep reading. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Chew, chew on that one. Let's read that one again. Now, we have received not the lowercase s, spirit of the world, but the lowercase s, s, spirit which is of God, that we might, write their definition, know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual and notice none of that is capital S, of course. We are to try the spirits. Now, does this mean that Paul is implementing 1 John 4, verse 2? No. Let's continue. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Let's, let's keep reading to the close of the chapter. This is important. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. 
For whom hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now very quickly, if 1 John 4 verses 1 through 3 are the smoking gun proof test of someone's salvation, Where is it mentioned? Where is Paul utilizing that simple test of someone's salvation without judging their fruits? Where is it? One might point to the comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's very vague and proves nothing. Okay? Okay, but we do see a comparing comparing spiritual things, the Spirit of God that liveth in you, with spiritual things, the Word of God, the King James Bible, the Bible. Okay, now First Corinthians three sixteen. This sums it all up. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Hello. And what case is that, S? Seven. First Corinthians 7, verse 40. First Corinthians seven verse forty. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Okay. Now we know that Paul was saw the third heaven where God is, and he was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble because Paul's biggest problem or sin was his pride okay yeah can uh, can you detect a little sarcasm right there and I think also that I have the Spirit of God I'm saved yes but capital S okay and of course 12 3 in 1st Corinthians Brother Aaron, if you're watching this, I, I hope you make it through to right here. Wherefore, I give you to understand, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the capital S, Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed. That no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. That no man... Okay, look at this verse. Aaron, you watching me? You watching me? Look at this. Look at it. Look at it. Take a second. Look at it. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking speaking by the capital S Spirit of God the Lord dwells within him calleth Jesus accursed and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost okay the Spirit of God the Holy Ghost we serve one God and the Lord is that Spirit so the Lord within someone who is truly saved and born again is not going to call Jesus accursed Okay? And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay? You have to put into account the accursed there. Someone who has a counterfeit spirit, which is not the Spirit of God, the Lord himself, can
Spirit of God, okay, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And someone who is lost can say that. Yeah, that's not saying that this is not true. No. Why? That no man speaking, speaking by the capital S Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. You um, a curse by saying that he paid for our sins in hell. Okay. You not calling Jesus is the Lord is calling him a curse. You not saying that. But see, someone who has a counterfeit antichrist spirit can fake it. Because what you see, speaking, and they're right there, can say, say, speaking, draw, draw a line right there to connect those two. Speaking and saying, call it. You get what I'm saying? Okay, now, Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, now, Beloved, Oh, go back to 1 John, um, 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Prophets. Prophets. What's a prophet? Now, very quickly, um, very quickly, I want to re uh, read off some um, types of spirits. We're not going to look these up because we want to get the prophets, okay? Okay? But there are several types of spirits. What do you mean, Brad? Well, get a pen and paper, okay? Or mark this part in the video that you can come back to reference, okay? Because um, I'm going to read some types of these spirits, okay? Spirit of God. Genesis 1-2. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. The spirit of wisdom. Exodus chapter 28, verse 3. Exodus 31, verse 3. A familiar spirit. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6, and verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11. A spirit of jealousy. Numbers chapter 5, verse 14, and verse 30. An evil spirit. Judges chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 23. And 1 Samuel chapter 16, 13 through 16, and verse 23. Spirit of divination. Okay. Spirit of divination. Acts 16, verse 16. Spirit of sorrow. 1 Samuel, verses 1. Uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 15. Spirit of all flesh. Numbers 16, verse 22. And Numbers... Chapter 27, verse 16, Spirit of Man. Proverbs, 
chapter 20, verse 27. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 21. Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 1. 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. And Spirit of the Beasts. Ecclesiastes 3, 21. Uh, Spirit of Man and Spirit of Beast is, uh, appears in both times in Ecclesiastes 3, 21, just so you know. And of course, the Spirit of Truth. Spirit of Truth. Let's, let's look that up really quick before we get to prophets, okay? Spirit of Truth. John, excuse me, John chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, capital S, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Okay? And very quickly, while we're looking at this, go to 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter, th uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Hold your place in 14 and go to uh, John 14 and go to for, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that capital S Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. And if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Okay? Okay? Now, go to John 15. Verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the capital S, Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, verse 27, and ye also shall, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay? Okay? And of course, 16, 13. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, for he will shew you things to come. The Lord himself, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Now, we have, I had to go through that. Now, uh, where, where, where was that? Okay. All right. Now, uh, hold on one second. I'm getting confused with my notes. Okay. All right. Prophets. Go back now to uh, 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, lowercase s, something that is imparted, spirit of man, that kind of stuff, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. What is a prophet? What is a prophet? Well, hello, a prophet is someone who foretells the future, right? We all know that. You know, the prophecy of Isaiah, of Ezekiel, of Jonah, and stuff like that. Yes, a prophet is someone who foretells the future events. Yes. Here's a question. Is that the only thing that curtails being a prophet? Is that it? Just foretelling of future events. Prophets are used of the Lord to foretell of future events. Yes. But is that all there is to it, to being a prophet? Law well, first mentioned here. Genesis chapter 20. This is important. 
Okay? This is important. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Law well, first mention. Oh, it's not a law. Yeah, it is. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Check this out. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, as my one brother said, because my, you know, my language skills aren't always there. <laughs> He's like, prophet, not prophet. He likes to correct me. I love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. But, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, Know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So there's the first mention of the word prophet. Prophet. Excuse me, brother. Okay? But now, here's a question. Prophets, prophets, excuse me, got to work on that. Prophets foretell of future events. Is that all they do? Is that all that curtails to being a prophet? And question, did Abraham ever give a prophecy of a future event? Yes, he did. What? Genesis 22. Now, I was going to read verses 1 on to verse 8, but let's, let's get right down to the nitty-gritty. Okay? The nitty-gritty. Here is a prophecy that Abraham gave. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, comma, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now, you, if you got an NIV, an ESV, and nitwit living in the trash, a non-King James, they messed us up. The uh, NLT even says something like, God will provide for himself a sheep. You and I are sheep. Okay, I'm not going to get the uh, parallel Bible out to show you that. Uh, me and a brother already kind of went through this already together. But, now, here in the context, a ram was caught in the thicket. Let's uh, let's see. And Abraham said to the fierce God. And Abraham, uh, look at verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. A ram with horns. Okay? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself, himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That's a what is called a messianic prophecy. Because God manifests in the flesh, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, came to the earth. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? And God provided himself, the word made flesh, a sacrifice on the cross to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and to shed his blood for the remission of my sins and your sin. See? So yeah, that was a future prophecy. So yes, Abraham was had a prophecy there. Yes, he did. Go to Exodus now, chapter 7. Okay, now, Exodus chapter 7. Again, prophets foretell of future events. We know that. Yes, we know that. Is that all there is to a prophet? No. Oh. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Okay? Verses 1 and 2. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a, lowercase g, God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Now, did Aaron give any future prophesy, uh, prophesying or something? He, he, he told Pharaoh, hey, this is what's going to happen, and then it happened. Right? So, yes, you could say that. But, let's keep reading. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Let's read that again. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh. Kind of like a mouthpiece, because remember, Moses of him, his own accord said that he wasn't eloquent. It says nothing about him having a hair flip. Nothing. Just that he wasn't a good speaker. So, in comes Aaron to speak for him what the Lord gave Moses to speak. For telling of future events, yes, but that wasn't, that's not all that curtails to being a prophet. Okay? Exodus 15, oh no, that's about Miriam. Numbers 11, Numbers 11, because Miriam was a prophetess. Okay? We won't read that one. Numbers 11, verse 29. Or if you want to read it, it's uh, Exodus 15, 20. Go ahead and check that one out if you want to. But we're going to uh, Numbers 11, verse 29. Check this out. And Moses, uh, Numbers chapter 11, verse 29. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his, lowercase s, spirit upon them. You catch that one, right? Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Let's read that again. And Moses said unto him, speaking to Joshua, Envious thou for my sake, my sake, excuse me, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his lowercase s spirit upon them to do what? Speak in the name of the Lord by telling of future events, but also being a mouthpiece unto the Lord. Let's continue this. Deuteronomy chapter 3, uh, 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Uh, not 26, Brad. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Did I get that right? Yes, I do. We're going to read this whole chapter. Oh, can you handle that? Is this too much for you? Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 13. The whole thing. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign and the, or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake of unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, 
which brought you out to the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out to the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him, to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. <coughs> Excuse me. Then thou shalt inquire and make search and ask diligently and behold, if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly and all that is therein and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof. And thou shalt burn with fire that city, and all the spoil thereof, every whit, for the Lord thy God. And it shall be in heap forever. It shall not be built again. And there shall cleave naught of the cursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and shew thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee, as he has sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments, which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. So, I ask you, false prophets, I don't think the Lord has much use for them, does he? Does he? Beg your pardon. Does he? You're supposed to kill him. Even if they're friends, relatives, you're supposed to put them away. We're not supposed to we're, we're not supposed to kill people today. I'm not saying that. This is Old Testament. This is Old Testament under the law. God takes very seriously the offense of false prophets. Okay? Deuteronomy 18. Now, 15 through 22. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God, in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet, capital P, by the way, from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. Will put my words in in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now notice. Capital P prophet in verse 15. Okay. Capital P prophet here in verse 18. And look at now 
This is reference. This is a messianic reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay, but note this, and he shall. Uh, I will raise them up a capital P prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words, lowercase w, of course, in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Okay? And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Prophets do foretell of future events. Absolutely. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Old Testament prophets. Yes. But now note this. Verse 20. But the lowercase p, prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And, thou sh and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Okay, so we see the functions of the prophet. Things coming to pass, foretelling of future events. Obviously, have you ever read the prophets? But also being a mouthpiece of the Lord. Speak the words of the Lord, which entail future events. But we're also going to see an aspect of that within the New Testament. Okay? All right. 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 20. 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 20. Come on. There we go. Work with me, fingers. Now, this is talking about Samuel. Okay, and Samuel did foretell future events. Yes, he did, but he was also the mouthpiece of the Lord. Because you got to remember, the Holy Ghost wasn't a permanent resident within the believer as he is today. Permanent, sealed. They were not sealed within the Old Testament. They were not. They weren't. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident within the believers within the Old Testament. He could come and go. Okay? So, prophets, you know, would speak the word of the Lord that the Lord would give him, impart to him. Okay? Stuff like that. Speaking in the name of the Lord. We just saw that in Deuteronomy. What was that? In Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 22. That's a really good definition of what a prophet is. But Samuel 3, verse 20, And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. He foretold the future events, but he also spake the word of the Lord. Okay, which was not just for telling future events. Okay? Okay? Especially within the Old Testament. Okay? And 1 Samuel 9, verse 9. Here again. Okay? 
the function of a prophet, yes, for telling future events, but he is a spokesman, a mouth of the Lord, because the Lord could come and go, okay, within the Old Testament. The Lord himself does not live, did not live permanently within the people within the Old Testament, okay? He could come and go. 1 Samuel 9, verse 9. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet, note the uh, capital P there, was before time called a seer, note the capital S. Okay? Note that. Okay? That right there, the capital is given that for title. Look at the text. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called by name, you know, what he is, hey, that's a prophet. That's why prophet right there is capital P, and seer is capital S, title. Okay? That's very th common English, people. Okay? <laughs> okay? Just, just to let you know. Okay? Now, go to Matthew. 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 Chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verses 15 on to verse 23. Of course. Of course. Now, doctrinally, this is still the Old Testament. Okay? Christ as king was offering the kingdom unto the Jews. Okay? He had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? He hadn't died for our sins yet. He hadn't shed his blood on the cross yet. Okay, doctrinally, this is the Old Testament. Here's the king speaking, giving to the offering the, to the Jews the millennial kingdom and giving him the rundown of what it's going to be like in the millennial kingdom. Okay, but let's read. Beware of fall, uh, Matthew 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are raving wolves. Oh boy, ain't they. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay? Hello. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, kingdom of heaven is a reference to the physical, literal kingdom where Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from. You watch any of my stuff, you know that. Okay? So, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, spoken, prophesied in thy name? Did you catch that? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then I will profess profess unto them I never knew you meaning personal relationship depart from me ye that work iniquity yeah yeah you've prophesied in their name but he never knew you word of God false prophet and of course 
Matthew 24, which is describing the time of Jacob's trouble, which we will not be here, being the Church of the Living God, because we will be called up. And that calling up is coming really, really quickly there, man. Okay. Matthew 24, verses 1 on to verse 14. Twenty-four, Matthew 24, verses 1 and verse 14. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, second coming, and the end of the world? He's talking to Jews. Okay? He's talking to Jews. He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He hadn't died for our sins or shed his blood on the cross yet. This was still doctrinally the Old Testament. Okay? And Jesus answered, and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Capital C. Christ. The word Christ means anointed one. Anointed. Okay? You heard people say about they have an anointed ministry. Okay? But this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? For many shall... And that's key to remember. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and COVID-19, <coughs> excuse me, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. I, I had to throw that in there, sorry. All these are the beginning of sorrows. These things are happening. Okay? But now, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right here, talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Right here. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You and I don't have to endure to the end to be saved at all. We're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? This right here, when the Lord Jesus Christ is on the earth, he was under the law. Okay? He was under the law. He had not fulfilled the law as far as righteousness toward God is concerned. Okay? Being right with God. He, he had yet to die for sins according to the scriptures and bury and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? It's very important to note that. You and I don't have to endure to the end to be saved. You're saved and born again. You are sealed. Okay? Right there tells you and during to the end to be saved, which one will have to do during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is not written for us, doctrinally. Instruction of righteousness, oh yeah, it's all there. But, doctrinally, this is not written for us. Okay? And this gospel of the kingdom, the coming millennial kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. But many false prophets, many false prophets, ones who are speaking or are claiming to speak for the Lord, right? The word of the Lord. Many false prophets. Now, go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, 
verses 13 under verse 18. Okay? Acts chapter 3, verses 13 under verse 18. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Now, this is during the transition, okay? Christ had died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? And had ascended, okay? But the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, okay? Not the kingdom of heaven, was being offered unto the Jews, okay? First the kingdom, then the spiritual kingdom, okay? Was still being offered unto the Jews first, Okay? They rejected that in Acts chapter 7. That's why Acts chapter 7 is so pivotal. Because right after Acts chapter 7, what do you see? Goes to the Gentiles. Okay? And then in Acts 15, they all get together at the Jerusalem conference, and they all come out preaching the gospel that Paul preached. Because the gospel for today, in the time of the Gentiles, which this dispensation is, was revealed specifically unto Paul. After, of course, that the Jews rejected the, the kingdom of God. It was still the New Testament. It was still the time of the Gentiles. But the spiritual kingdom still first had to be offered unto the Jews. Or else God wouldn't be fair and just. You see. It wasn't this hyper-dispensationalist thing. Okay? That there's one gospel to the Jew, one gospel to the Gentile. No. No. Nonsense. Nonsense. No, 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 no. 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 It was defined through uh, that it was defined by Paul what the Lord gave Paul for this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? Okay, you get it? There were there are not two bodies, one of the Jew, one of the Gentiles. That's hyper dispensationalism. Okay? It had to first be offered to the Jew. They rejected it. It came to the Gentile. Okay? And then it was clarified. Through Paul, what the Lord gave him. Okay? Excuse me. So, now, Acts chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Now, there were in the church that was Antioch certain prophets. And teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, which was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And, oh, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now, prophets, see, in this dispensation, the Holy Ghost is a permanent resident, whereas in the other dispensations for this one, the Holy Ghost was not permanent. So, we as saved, born again, King James Bible believing Church of the Living God, okay, we can be used of the Lord to speak His words through the Scriptures, not new revelation, okay? Not new revelation. What God has given for us to be revealed to us is right here in the Word, the Scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible. There are no prophets revealing new revelation. 
And when you look at these false prophets, uh, it's usually contrary, like nine times out of ten, contrary to what is written in the Word, the King James Bible, the real Bible. But we can be used to speak the Word of the Lord through the Scriptures. So in that sense, we can prophesy. You get it? But let's continue. Okay, let's continue. Acts chapter, oh, and verse 6. Verse 6 in uh, Acts 13. And when they had gone through the Isles of, Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew name, whose name was Bar-Jesus, son of. Okay? A false prophet. And Acts chapter 21, 10. A prophet. Just, I wanted to throw this in here. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Okay? Who did prophesy. He, he wrapped up his arms and his feet and stuff. In uh, Paul's girdle, and said, "Whose ever girdle this is, who if he goes to Jerusalem, he's gonna have lots of trouble." So yes, he foretold of a future event. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. But see, as far as what is revealed for us today in the time of the Gentiles, as far as what the prophets did in the Old Testament, no. But you and I can prophesy. Prove that to you. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 under verse 31. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 21 on to, oh, 27 under verse 31. Excuse me. Now, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, languages, not the shata, botai, antai, botai kind of stuff, none of that, no. Known languages. Not the blah, 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 blah. No, no. Known languages. Okay. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts? And yet, shew I unto you a more excellent way. 14 now, skipping the, the chapter about charity, not love, there's a difference. 14 verses 1 through 3. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, understandeth them. Howbeit in the spirit, okay, says, he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. So right there, prophesieth, prophesieth, false prophets. Someone who is claiming to speak on behalf of the Lord. Okay? Okay? A false prophet gives false prophecies, foretells of future events, like the late Jean Boshoff, who unfortunately for him is dead and frying in hell, but praise the Lord that he is just. Okay? He gave a lot of false prophecies. Okay? But he also claimed to speak for the Lord. His Lord was Satan. Okay? Just an example I can throw out to you. But see, what does it say there? But that he but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to what? Edification and exhortation and comfort. 
comfort. How do you do that? Through the scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay? Now go to, uh, we're going to skip a little and go from, and still in verse uh, chapter 14, verses 20, on to verse 33. Okay? 20 on to verse 33. All right? Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all this will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Speaking the words of the Lord through his book, the King James Bible. Speaking in the name of the Lord, speaking the word of the Lord through his book, the King James Bible. Okay, let's continue. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak to in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Shut up! And let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let him first hold his peace. For there are many, for, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. Speaking in the name of the Lord through this. Okay, that's how we, we do it today. Okay, but you know, prophesy. For the spirit of the prophets... One who foretells of the future, but also is a spokesman, spokesman, spokesman for the Lord. Speaking his word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, and is filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And that ain't a building. That's bodies, okay? Okay? Now, 1 John chapter 4. Let's continue. So, do we understand now what a prophet is? That someone who foretells the future events, but is also used as a mouthpiece of, a, of the Lord. And for today, in the time of the Gentiles, one could be prophesying, or act as a prophet, but yet not have the office to give a future events, because the future is foretold right here. So in that, there are no prophets foretelling of future events as far as, you know, the coming new world order, the catching away of the body of Christ uh, before the time of Jacob's trouble, giving new revelation that isn't already revealed. No. But... We can speak the word of the Lord, the word of God, the word of truth. The Lord can use us to comfort and edification. See, see, that's very important. So now, let's read this. Okay, let's read this. 
verses 1 and verses 2. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets, ones who are claiming to speak for the Lord but are not, ones who are claiming that the, the Holy Ghost is within them, but they are not. But he is not, excuse me. For many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the capital S, Spirit of God, that dwells within a saved, born again, King James Bible believing church of the living God. Okay? Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit, lowercase s, that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Wait, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Sorry for me tripping up on that. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit, lowercase s, that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Spirit of Antichrist. You note the lowercase s, Right there in verse 3, every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay? And you see in verse 2, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every lowercase s spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And then look up at verse 1, because many false Prophets are gone out into the world. First John 4 verses 1 through 3 is not a test to prove one's salvation. It is for the trying of the spirits who are false prophets. Because, now think about this. Because... There are Jesuits out there who can who can confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. But okay, they can they can confess that. Nail it right on the head. But look at what they are doing and how they are behaving themselves. The fruit See, and that's the problem. That's why a lot of you infiltrators and coadjutors and Jesuits get so upset. That's why I was attacked personally. Because this is not a smoking gun. And I have corrected myself. You know, the Lord, excuse me, the Lord corrected me, rebuked me through the scriptures, through the body of Christ. And I had to publicly uh, repent and confess that I made a mess up, that I was in error. And I got that video, and I went on to some of the other older videos of mine and put that on the video to show that I did that, okay? But this is for the trying of false prophets, okay? Not to prove someone is saved or lost, okay? Again, where is it in the Pauline epistles for us today? Where is it? If this was the smoking gun proof test for someone's salvation, how come this confession was never used? Paul. They argue and say, well, well, it was probably written after Paul was dead. So you expect me to believe that the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit wouldn't reveal this to Paul for us today? No. 
Uh uh. No, 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 no. And see, a Jesuit infiltrator who can confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and that could say that Jesus is the Lord, okay? But yet the fruit stinks and the chastisement is not there. They get upset. Oh, well, see, I can confess. I can confess it. That means I'm saved, but the fruit stinks. Oh, he's just a carnal Christian. He's just messing. No, 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 no. Where's the chastisement? And the Jesuit coadjutors and infiltrators who can confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that Jesus is the Lord, that can confess that, there have been witnesses that the fruit stinks. That's why some of these guys got so irritated and attacked. Because, brethren, at the end of the day, proving someone's salvation is not that quick. It isn't. For today. During the time of Jacob's trouble, when someone takes the mark, they're going to hell. They will not have the Spirit of God within them, of course. Could this be more so strongly implemented as far as salvifically during the time of Jacob's trouble? Maybe. Maybe. But this is for trying of false prophets, ones who are claiming to speak for the Lord. And they do not. They do not. Okay. They can, you know, you got to look at their fruit. You got to look at their testimony. Okay. It's not that simple. It isn't. Because if it were that simple, there are certain Jesuits out there who can easily confess this through lots of training. But yet they're as lost as a blind man running a race. Or lost as blind people running a race. Okay? Now, I have a lot of other things that I was going to get to. But um, I'm not going to get to that. But I want to uh, focus one more time on the spirit of Antichrist. What is Antichrist? We know that Antichrist appears one, two, three, four times in the King James Bible, the real Bible. What are they? John, 1 John 2, verse 18. 1 John 2, verse 18. Not Peter, Brad. 1 John 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and ye have heard, and note, the last time. Note that. Little children, it is the last time, and ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There are many antichrists out there. Yes. And 2.22. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Also, 4.3. We just read that, but let's read it again. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Okay? And first John or second John one seven. Second John verse seven. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Many deceivers. How are they deceiving? They're false prophets. 
For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. What is an antichrist? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verses 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, questioning what God has said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, trees, plural, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Eve added to the word of God. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The replacement. The replacement. Antichrist, yes, is against Christ. Yes, but it is replacing. Ye shall be as gods. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Says ye, plural, but you shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil, right? You're your own God. You're an atheist. You claim you don't believe in a God. Yes, you do. You, you are your own God. You nitwit. Yes. Okay? Replacement. Yes, Antichrist is against Christ, but it's replacing the true Christ, the true Jesus Christ, our Father, found in the King James Bible, the real Bible, presented to you in the real Bible. It's a replacement. And also, on that, Isaiah. Isaiah, chapter 14. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the replacement. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 14. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He is an angel of light. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set, sit upon the... I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Five I wills. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Replacing God. I will be like the most high. That's Antichrist. It's, yeah, it's totally against Jesus Christ, our God, our Lord and Savior, our Father. But it's replacing him with himself. Replacement. Replacement theology, anyone? Yeah. That's what it is to be Antichrist. Ezekiel chapter 28. Looking at my time here. Ezekiel 28, verses 14 on to verse 19. Angel of light. Lucifer. Satan. That old devil, serpent. Didn't have any congestion, but... Okay. Ezekiel 28, verses 14 on to verse 19. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee, but, that set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. 
By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the filled the mist of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Son of the morning is an angel of light. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. And I will, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Pride. Pride was his problem. He was taken with his own beauty, and he was corrupted by the brightness of his own wisdom. Replacing. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay. And very quickly, once again, go to Daniel. I, read, I did these in the coming Inquisition video. But I'm going to do them here again. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 and verse 25, talking about Antichrist. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors, uh, Daniel 8, verses 23 and verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Okay, 11, Daniel 11. Verses 21 under verse 24. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be over, overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. After the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall... For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea. And he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. And verses 36 on to verse 39. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every little g God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, capital G, God of gods, little g, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, because he will be a celibate pope, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all God, above all. I shall, I will be like the Most High. Hello? Okay? But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God, that's a capital G, by the way, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and he shall divide the land for gain. Antichrist. Replacement.
Okay. Now go back to First John chapter four verses one. Okay. Beg your pardon, brethren. I gotta pause this real quickly, right? All right. Sorry about that. First John four verses one and verse three. Now, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, according to the scripture, by the way. How are you trying them? What's their fruits? Whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out, in, gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the capital S, Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, which is against and which replaces, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Verses 4, 5, and 6 now. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He that is in you. You're saved, born again. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, you know, and the Lord is that spirit. These three are one, okay? Not three persons making one God, one God. You have God within you. Okay, and who's the other he? Then he that is in the world. Antichrist is in the world. Not the man, Antichrist, but the spirit of Antichrist, which is against Christ and seeks to replace Christ. You know, like the Jesuits and all their little suborders. Jesuitism, Catholicism, they're one and the same. Okay? They, the false, who are they? Because many false prophets, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. The world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth that will guide you into all truth, the Lord in you, but note that is a lowercase s. And the spirit, lowercase s, of error. The comforter, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, and the Lord is that spirit, will guide you into all truth. And the spirit of error which is Antichrist. And very quickly, okay, look at verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look up now to 1 John chapter 3, verses 6 on to verse 10. Okay? Look at this. Whoso, uh, John, 1 John 3, verses 6 on to verse 10, okay? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him, okay? You have, if you're saved and born again, you have the Lord living within you, the Holy Ghost. But remember, the Holy Ghost ain't pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything, neither is the devil pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything either, okay? You have a free will, okay? You abide in him by, look at verse 6, yeah, yeah, 1 John 4, verse 6, We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he, is, he that is not of God heareth not us, Hereby know we the spirit of truth, lowercase s, and the spirit of error, which is being, these things are being imparted. Okay? Look back up at 1 John 3. Now verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. 
He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. That is referring to the indwelling, sealed Holy Ghost, the seal. Okay, you have, you're born again, you're saved, you have the Lord living within you, okay? The seed there is the Holy Ghost, okay, being born again, okay? Read that again. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. The Holy Ghost within you, you're saved and born again, is not going to guide you to sin. Not going to happen, buddy. But see... The war of the uh, the uh, spirit and the flesh. They fight. And God ain't holding a gun to your head. And the devil ain't holding a gun to your head. You have free will. You could either obey the spirit of God that lives within you. Or you can obey the lusts of the flesh. The skin suit. Okay? You have free will. Okay? That's what that's talking about. It's not talking about uh, sinless perfection. I have a whole video on that, just so you know. I might link it in this one. I might. But that's what that's talking about. Okay? That's what that is talking about. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Born of God. Born again. Spirit of God that lives within you. Okay? For his seed, right there, defined, his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. When I was attacked for being rebuked of the Lord through the scripture and through the church of the living God, the body of Christ, okay, when I was attacked, you mean to tell me that someone who was banking on the fact that he could readily confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and that Jesus is the Lord, but yet was sending links to other people, um, attacking other people, um, mocking other people. You want to tell me that that was just somebody abiding in the flesh? No, that's someone who is a Jesuit infiltrator. Not saved. Give me a break. You shall know them by their fruits. Okay? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Now, see... Personally, mano y mano, man to man, outside my door, when applying this in the proper context as far as false prophets, I have, and I cannot deny that, I have never heard someone who I know is lost or a false prophet, you know, someone who claims to speak in the name of the Lord, I have not heard someone who I know is false be able to confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I cannot deny that. Outside, mano y mano, man to man, I have not encountered that. I can't I can't deny that. But here on YouTube, people who are trained Jesuit infiltrators, coadjutors, can confess just by memory, not from the heart. See, that's the difference. That's the difference. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. I believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That ain't from your heart. That ain't from the heart. That's just here. Not from here. And Brother Philip Newton did a wonderful video on that premise of professing and confessing. The rest of the notes were on confessing and professing, okay, with a bunch of scripture verses. But I'm not going to build on another man's foundation, okay? I'm not. We're almost at the three-hour mark now.
Okay. Okay, but let's read verse 10 in 1 John chapter 3. In this the children of God are manifested, are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? Talking about the indwelling Spirit of God. And the Lord is that Spirit. And also right there, the children of the devil. And look down again at 1 John 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God, saved, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us, not saved. Hereby know we the lowercase s, spirit of truth, truth that is being imparted from the Lord, and the spirit of error, the, uh, the false prophets, the spirit of error that is being given to these false prophets by the Antichrist spirit. Okay? The context of 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3, especially for today, is defined, oh wow, beg your pardon, by the first verse, because many false prophets, and we looked quite exhaustively at what a prophet is who foretells the future, but also is used of the Lord to speak his word. And today, in the time of the Gentiles, you can prophesy by speaking his word because you are saved and born again and you have the Lord Jesus Christ within you, the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, through this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible, can speak unto those who are saved who have the same spirit. And those who are lost can be cut to the heart by the word of God. Because, because Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? Okay? That is the context of 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3. But when you put into the equation, hi, thank you, Brother Philip Newton, Verses 4 and 6, it becomes even more clear. That is why I was so viciously attacked by, Jesu by uh, Jesuit infiltrators and coadjutors. That's why some of you were attacked by Jesuit infiltrators whose actions speak louder than his confession that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and that Jesus is the Lord. That's why some of these infiltrators and coadjutors were so adamant and clinging to that and calling, calling me a heretic, uh, a heretic and a hypocrite. No. See, and I was accused of blasphemy and hypocrisy. No, see, I was in error. And the Lord, through the scriptures, through the body of Christ, corrected me of my error, of what I had taught in some videos. And I publicly confessed that I was in error and repented of it. That's why I did that one video, and that's why I'm doing this video. Okay? How can you know if someone is saved or not today? What, how'd you come to know the Lord? Hmm? How'd you come 
to know the Lord. And in talking, you can inspect the fruit. And if they are one who is um, speaking, you know, prophesying, you know, speaking in the name of the Lord, and even using the King James Bible, the real Bible, uh, do, do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Oh, thank you. All right, excuse me. See? The proper context. And a certain brother, that one faithful day where I made that video, when the Lord was already working on me on this, you know, Brother Jeff Jones, um, several other links, uh, Brother Philip Newton, Brother Brian Harlow, Harlow, Brother Brian Harlow, okay, even Brother Tim, okay, even Brother Tim, and yes, even what uh, Brother uh, Matthew Landau had come out with, and yes, even what Brother uh, Aaron Judge came out with, yes, but it was the context, it's the context in which you use it, and when that one brother sent me that email with what the Lord was already working on me on with this, that broke it. That's like, oh boy. And that is on my end what started this whole cavalcade of events. And those who were false, clearly identified. And they used the tactic of deflection, called the enemy, me because I trust this book against them who were found out to be false. They call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. Now, I didn't do this video to reopen scabs to get attacked again, but you know what? So what? So what? Go ahead. Go ahead. 1 John 4 verses 1 through 3 is not a proof, is not a smoking gun proof text, test, excuse me, for your salvation. It is in context for identifying false prophets. As Brother Brian Denlinger said, book the heretic. Okay? Okay? Now, this is almost three hours worth. And I may or may not make an introduction video to this. I may or may not. We'll see. But uh, like I said, I had written down a whole bunch of other stuff about confessing and professing. But Brother Philip Newton already did that. And I do not want to build on another man's foundation. Because like I said, Brother Philip Newton, um, whom I'm would love to get in contact with, but I don't think he wants to, and that's fine, that's fine. Uh, I like to ask permission to link videos, but I am going to link uh, Brother Philip Newton's video on this, on this topic, because it's so choice, and that was one of the things that he, that the Lord used to correct me, along with Brother Brian Harlow. I'm enunciating that because I seem to have a problem mispronouncing Brother Harlow's last name. I like to say Harlow. <laughs> Harlow. And it's Harlow. So, anyway, brethren, um, like I said, I know we had a lot, but like I said, I do not want to build off of another man's foundation. So, um, so yeah. So, yeah. And the other references in the Webster's 1828 were for confession and profession. But, like I said, Brother Philip Newton already covered that. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hopefully am going to be coming out with videos about um, the Jesuit Catholic disloyalty teaching. And the Lord also showed me something about feminism that I might want to, that he might want me to do, not me. But um, I hope this has helped. I hope um, this has clarified. Um, I hope. Uh, I'm sure I'll be attacked for this once again, but it's what's at the scriptures. I, Brad Paul Abenshine, believe every single word of this book. And I trust this book. You know what? I don't trust my own interpretation. But the spirit of truth 
And the Lord is that spirit will guide you into all truth. So, I love you. Uh, if you've made it through this whole thing, which is almost three hours, God bless you. If not, that's all good. And I'll see you in the next video whenever or whatever that may be. It's up to the Lord. Love you. Thank you for watching if you did. If you do.